bunch of ancient human bones with human bite marks buried under 850,000 years of dirt, five bodies found laid out with care, possibly the oldest funeral ritual ever discovered, and a jawbone displayed as a Neanderthal for decades turned out to not be what it seemed. These are times science tried to bury the truth about early humans. In a cave called Grandolina in northern Spain, researchers found some pretty unsettling ancient bones. One belonged to someone who would have been very young, and it had very specific cut marks on the neck. Not the kind you'd get from an accident, the kind that is left behind when someone's trying to strip flesh from a bone. Around a third of the human bones found in that same layer dated between 850,000 to 780,000 years ago. They all had similar signs. Cut marks, smashed marrow bones, human bite marks in them. The species behind it was Homo antecessor, one of our early relatives. And based on what's been found, this kind of thing didn't just happen once. As for why they did it, could have been desperation, could have been a way to deal with rival groups. They targeted mostly juveniles, probably because they were easier pickings. When this research first came out, some scholars kind of tiptoed around it, but the team led by Jose Maria Bermudez de Castro has been finding the same patterns since the 90s. And in 2024, a new round of excavations confirmed it all over again with better dating and clearer samples. In central Israel at a site called Tin Shemet Cave, archeologists found five human bodies that have been carefully buried. There were two full skeletons and three partial ones, and there's something about how they were placed. They were curled up in fetal positions, surrounded by red ochre and broken deer bones. It looks like there was meaning behind these burials. They hadn't just been, you know, tossed into pits and covered with dirt. The cave was first excavated in 2016, but the big discoveries were announced in 2024 and published in early 2025. Researchers dated the remains to somewhere between 100,000 and 110,000 years ago, and that's kind of cool because it pushes back the idea of symbolic thinking way earlier than a lot of people expected. But the find didn't get the spotlight it probably deserved right away. Part of the reason is no one's sure who these people were. Some think they were early Homo sapiens, others say they could have been Neanderthals or something in between, but now, with more evidence and high-res scans of the cave layout, it's getting harder to ignore. Whether or not we know their exact species, these people were clearly thinking in ways most researchers didn't think they would be in that time period. In 1997, a German archaeologist claimed that he'd found Neanderthal bones near a volcano in Ochtenung, Germany. There was a jaw that was supposedly 165,000 years old. It got written up, it was put in museum displays, but years later, new tests showed something pretty embarrassing. Turns out the bone wasn't prehistoric at all. It was from a regular person who died in the early Middle Ages, and at least 21 other bones, all thought to be ancient, turned out to be nowhere near as old as they originally thought. And some of them were actually flat out fake. The man behind it, Axel von Berg, is now being investigated. It's looking like this wasn't just sloppy science. There might have been a real effort to fudge the evidence and make the site seem way older than it actually was. This went unchallenged for decades. The bones were cited in papers, taught about in schools, shown to tourists. Nobody questioned it until someone finally sent them out for proper dating. That's how deep some bad data can get buried. For years, textbooks said the first humans arrived in North America about 13,000 years ago, during the last ice age. That was the Clovis model. But then scientists at White Sands National Park found something that didn't fit at all. Human footprints pressed into ancient mud that hardened into rock. And when they tested them, they turned out to be 21,000 to 23,000 years old, so way older than anyone thought people were even here. Some prints looked like they were from teenagers, some were even younger, and a few ran alongside the tracks of giant sloths. But even after the first study came out in 2021, a lot of experts pushed back, saying the dating might be off. So the research team went back, tested again using completely different methods, and came back with the same answer. These prints were legit. For a while, the data just sat there because it didn't fit the standard narrative. But after three rounds of testing, nobody can really argue with it anymore. For a long time, people thought when humans showed up in the Americas, they hunted everything big to extinction. And that was that. Mammoths, mastodons, giant sloths, they're all wiped out within a few thousand years. But newer evidence from places like Santa Elena Cave in Brazil tells a different story. Archaeologists found the bones of a giant ground sloth at the site, along with a few stone tools and polished sloth bones with little holes in them, probably for 
hanging on a string. The bones were still fresh when they were carved, which means people weren't digging them up long after the animal had died. They were using parts of it while it was still around. Similar finds have popped up in Uruguay, Chile, and the US. The more sites they look at, the more it seems like early humans and these giant prehistoric animals lived side by side for thousands of years. Obviously, they eventually died off, but the idea of this fast extinction right after humans arrived doesn't hold up anymore. The old story was simple, this version's messier, but probably closer to the truth. In the early 1900s, a Czech archaeologist had a huge hold on what people believed about early humans in the Americas. His name was Alish Harjlika. He worked at the Smithsonian, and he was adamant that humans hadn't been in the Americas for more than 3,000 years. Anything older? He was like, no, not possible. And because he was in charge of the biggest institutions in the field, his opinion carried a ton of weight. Even when archaeologists started digging up stuff that clearly looked older, like the Folsom Prints in New Mexico in 1927, where a group of archaeologists found these carefully shaped stone points buried directly alongside the bones of an extinct Ice Age bison in New Mexico. Obviously, these were tools, and they were dated to about 10,000 years ago. But Harjlika completely dismissed them, and because nobody wanted to challenge the top guy at the Smithsonian, they kept quiet. It wasn't until decades later, when more discoveries piled up and dating methods got better, that researchers finally started speaking up. Turns out humans had been in the Americas way before 3,000 years ago, possibly even before 20,000. Harjlika may have not faked anything or hidden stuff like bones, but his influence basically put a halt to the conversation for a long time. A lot of early discoveries you know, probably got ignored or tossed aside just because they didn't fit this guy's narrative. Back in 1912, a fossil collector named Charles Dawson showed up with a strange looking skull that he said was found in Piltdown, England. It looked part human, part ape, and he claimed that it was the missing link. And the scientific world, they bought it. Museums displayed it. Textbooks called it proof that modern humans evolved in Europe. But this skull was actually a cobbled together mess. The skull was human, just a few hundred years old, and the jaw part was from an orangutan someone had stained the bones to make them look older. For over 40 years, nobody seriously challenged this. It wasn't until 1953 that scientists finally tested the bones using better dating methods, and they figured out the whole thing had been planted. Dawson is still the top suspect. He had a pattern of forging artifacts to boost his reputation. Definitely worked in this case. As far as hoaxes go, this one was pretty successful. It steered the whole field in the wrong direction for decades. It made researchers ignore legit fossils that didn't line up with the fake. In 2023, paleoanthropologist Lee Berger claimed a species called Homo naledi, who had small brains and lived around 250,000 years ago, was burying their dead and making cave art. That's a big deal, because we've always thought that kind of behavior only showed up in modern humans. The problem was, this was announced through a Netflix documentary before it got peer-reviewed, and a lot of scientists were not happy about this. They said the evidence for burials and engravings wasn't solid enough. There were no clear gray pits, no confirmed tool marks, no solid proof the markings were even made by Naledi. Some called it hype over science. In early 2025, another team took a closer look at the dirt around the bones, and they found no solid signs of grave pits. The stuff Berger's team said showed digging or burial didn't really check out when they tested it again. So now there was this debate in the research world. Was this a case of some rushed science, or was Berger knowingly trying to control the narrative? Sometimes when a new human species is discovered, the team that finds it basically locks everything down. They control the bones, the scans, the photos. If you're not part of their crew, good luck getting access. And that can go on for years. In the meantime, whatever story they tell about the fossil ends up becoming the official version, even if there are other ways to look at it. The issue is nobody else can check their work. Other scientists can't run their own tests or question the claims because they didn't have the material. So if someone does speak up, it's easy to shoot them down by saying, well, you haven't seen the bones yourself. It's not like a shady conspiracy necessarily, but it definitely slows things down as you've seen. In 2001, researchers working in Chad found a skull called Tumai. It was about 7 million years old and thought to be one of the earliest human ancestors, maybe even the first one to walk upright. The find was huge, made headlines around the world, and it reshaped the timeline of when humans split from apes. But in 2004, the same team also found a femur 
the upper leg bone, which would have told us for sure whether Tumai walked on two legs. And they didn't publish anything about it. Not in 2005, not in 2010, nothing until 2020, when another group of scientists finally studied it and said it looked more like a bone from something that walked on all fours. So why didn't the original team say anything about the femur? Why wasn't it included in the papers that claimed Tumai walked on two legs? The researchers who finally spoke up said the leg bone didn't really fit that story. Maybe that's why it got left out. I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Thank you.